A couple of months ago, we discussed whether it was better to go for a blower style graphics card or an open air graphics card for your ITX build, and the results showed that overall, maybe blower style cards aren't as bad as they're said to be. The testing showed that a blower style graphics card like this one is actually really effective in getting all the hot air out of the case, and we saw a massive drop in CPU thermals when compared to an open air card. That's kind of the risk that you run with an open air card like this one in a small form factor case. There's not much room for all of that hot air to go, seeing as it is dumped back into the case and it can be recirculated to the other components like the CPU cooler and the power supply. Now in that video we used two fairly similar GPUs in terms of power output, a GTX 1070 blower and an RTX 2060 Super Founders Edition with a slightly higher power target. As I mentioned in that video though that's kind of what you can expect between a blower card and an open air card of the same model. Usually the open air models will have a slightly higher power target and boost clock. Today though we're re testing this but with two of the same GPUs, both RTX 2070 Supers. This allows for much stricter comparisons as well as more direct comparisons like noise and boost clocks. So if you are tossing up between an open air graphics card and a blower style graphics card for your ITX build, we have a final answer for you today. And just like the initial video, I think a lot of you are going to be surprised by some of these results. So here are the two cards that we're comparing today. Both are RTX 2070 Supers. For our open air card, we have the Nvidia Founders Edition. And for our blower card, we have the Turbo from Asus. One interesting note is that compatibility wise, these two cards are almost identical in every aspect. Both cards are about 268 millimeters in length, 115 mils in height, and both are exactly two slots. Both take an eight plus six pin power connector and the TDP is supposedly the same at 215 watts. The open air card does have a slightly higher boost clock of 1800 megahertz versus the 1770 megahertz on the blower style card, but we'll take a closer look at this in just a minute. I will quickly say that the Asus Turbo is one of the better looking blower cards that I've seen out there. The design is fairly neutral and understated. Unfortunately, no backplate here, but that's pretty common with these affordable models. Also, if you plan on using multiple of these cards in a single workstation stacked closely together, there is a small raised lip at the corner of the card so that the fan is never completely blocked off in that situation. Now, the whole point of this video is to explore the different thermal outcomes of using a blower style graphics card versus an open air one, depending on the case you are using. For example, some more well ventilated cases like the Ghost S1 theoretically could be better for an open air card, seeing as this card will have no problem exhausting that heat out of the case. But then, for example, consider something like the Sentry 2.0 or the Node 202, something more slim and closed off. Theoretically, a blower style card might be more beneficial there, seeing as it can evacuate all that heat out of the case. So the cases that we're testing today include the two cases that we tested in the initial video, the Ghost S1 and the Sentry 2.0, but also the Silverstone SG13 and the new NZXT H1. All four of these cases represent different layouts and approaches to thermal design, and the result between blower versus open air could be different in either one. For example, the Ghost S1 represents what you can expect in a very compact sandwich layout case that has a decent ventilation all around, but no active exhaust. The results here, for example, would carry on to other cases with similar design layouts like the Dan A4. Now, a quick mention on some of the testing methodology when it comes to comparing these two cards in various cases. For each case, I have used the best CPU cooling solution that the case will support. For example, a 120mm AIO in the SG13. And seeing as we're also measuring CPU thermals, I have locked the CPU frequency, voltage, LLC, and fan speed for all of these tests. That way we can see the accurate thermal impact between blower and open air cards. Lastly, we're using a Heaven 4.0 benchmark loop at 1440p ultra settings. This is run for 30 minutes for each test to allow each case Case's interior to warm up sufficiently, and the room ambient has been controlled and monitored to stay at 21 degrees C exactly. 
All right, first up, let's start with the Ghost S1, an iconic SFF case that took the sandwich layout of the Den A4 and stretched it up to an 8 liter volume with thicker panels. Being a sandwich layout case, the CPU and GPU are cooled in compartments that are separated by an interior wall, but the results here show that the heat can still make its way between the two chambers. Let's start with GPU thermals, and here we have the blower card around 7 degrees warmer than the open air card. By the way, the values that you see here are the rounded averages for the final two minutes for the test. So this result is not too surprising. The Founders Edition 2070 Super does have a larger cooler at the end of the day, and this is a pretty well ventilated case. The interesting part is when we take a look at the CPU thermals during the same test. In the test system, we're using the Ryzen 5 3600 and we've locked that to 4.2 gigahertz at 1.2 volts. Now, despite the open air card itself running cooler than the blower card here, we can see that a lot of the heat from the open air card is dumped towards the CPU cooler, creating over a 10 degree warmer result. The blower card, on the other hand, effectively removes the heat from the case and keeps the Ryzen 5 3600 running a lot cooler. And a quick look at the GPU clock speed here. Basically, we just want to see whether either blower or open air card is reducing the clock speeds over time. Both are relatively stable here. The blower card is definitely a lot more sporadic seeing as it's running at a thermal constraint. And on average, clocks were 25 megahertz lower than the Founders Edition. All right, next up, let's take a look at the NZXT H1, a recent case release that I'm actually a huge fan of. And the results here are super interesting. This is a 13.5 liter vertical case with the motherboard and GPU IO facing downwards. That means that the exhaust heat from a blower style card actually gets exhausted and trapped below the case. Open air cards aren't too much better though. The issue there is that hot air gets trapped against that tempered glass front panel. So starting with GPU thermals and yep, you should definitely avoid a blower style card for this case. No question about it. Now for the Ghost S1, you probably remember me saying that the RTX 2070 Super blower card was running at a thermal limit of 83 degrees C. And as I understand it, these RTX GPUs have two thermal limits. One is kind of a happy limit or a soft limit, 83 C in this case, which the card will do some minor throttling to stay below or around. We saw this in the previous chart with the Ghost S1. Then there's a hard limit or a complete maximum, which the card will never exceed. 88C looking at the spec sheet for this GPU, where the card will throttle as much as it reasonably can to stay below. Now, looking at CPU temperatures during the same test, they're a lot closer than what we saw in the Ghost S1. So here, both graphics cards thermal designs are warming up the CPU cooler and chamber about the same amount, with the open air card actually running two degrees cooler. Finally, GPU clock speed between the two, where we see the most dramatic difference of all of the cases tested here. Again, and blower style cards are an absolute no for this case. On average, we're seeing clock speeds about 130 megahertz lower than the open air card. Next up, let's take a look at the Silverstone SG13. This is an 11 liter case that has been around for quite a while, but I only recently picked it up for a mainstream gaming build and I'm really happy that I did. The thermal design here is pretty conventional and basic, no use of risers or creative layouts, just a small, compact, microwave looking case with a decent amount of ventilation. And that amount of ventilation sure does help us a ton because the SG13 gives us the best GPU thermals out of the 4K cases tested for our RTX 2070 Super at 74 degrees C. It's quite happy and steady at those thermals too, maintaining a 9 degree cooler result compared to the blower card. For CPU thermals, the blower card allows our Ryzen processor to run around 5.5 degrees cooler. Seeing as we're running a 120mm front mounted radiator here, it's not too influenced by the internal temperature of the case. GPU clock speeds show the Founders Edition card around 40 megahertz faster than the ASUS Turbo Blower card. This isn't a huge margin and you wouldn't see any perceivable difference in games. Overall, an open air card is definitely favorable in this case when running a front mounted liquid cooler. Lastly, we have the Sentry 2.0, representing the slim console-like form factor that's very popular among ITX cases. Here, the graphics card is connected via a two-piece riser card that stacks it above the mother the board and the power supply. A lot of the heat from an open air card here gets exhausted out of the case thanks to the ample ventilation at the top, but the other half gets directed towards the motherboard and trapped inside the case. Overall, the results here were the most 
promising in favor of the blower card. GPU thermals are fairly close between them, only a one to two degree difference. But for CPU thermals, we see around an eight and a half degree warmer result for the CPU. Now that's pretty significant. If we were running a more power hungry CPU like the 3700X or 9700K, that could be enough to push the CPU into some very warm levels. For GPU clock speed, we can see that the blower card, although the thermal design here is promising, the clock speeds are still throttling and bumping around a bit. You could definitely bypass this with a bit of undervolting and manual tuning, but that's completely up to the user to do. Lastly, let's take a look at noise levels between each configuration. This is the noise level of the entire system after 30 minutes of the Heaven 4.0 loop, and we can see that the blower card creates a louder system every single time. However, one thing to keep note of here is that the CPU fan speed was locked at a constant speed, but if you were to run a fan curve instead, you might actually see the two results become a bit closer. That's because for the open air card configuration, the CPU thermals ran warmer for all tests except for in the NZXT H1, and this in turn would raise the CPU coolers fans. To get an idea of what the two cards sound like at load, here's a quick sample from the Ghost S1 testing, as well as a noise normalized thermal result. So open air graphics cards undoubtedly are the more popular choice for you know, users who are even going for the small form factor builds and a really constrained volume. And I do believe that to be the right choice because even if you are warming up the CPU by five to 10 degrees because that hot air can't really fully escape the case, you are overall getting a much more effective cooling design for the GPU itself. However, the thermal design of a blower card is promising and there are use cases where they are beneficial. For example, in slim console-like cases where the hot air from an open air card gets trapped and circulated back to the CPU, blower cards are very useful there. Also in gaming builds where CPU thermals are riding on the edge of what is safe and where an open air card would otherwise increase those thermals even further under sustained load. The main drawback that I see with blower style graphics cards is that you're just getting a cheaper cooling design overall because card makers consider this the kind of budget oriented and you know more affordable graphics card solution it's also you know one way that they can upsell you to a dual fan or triple fan model by saying that the thermals and noise levels are better there so there's definitely not a whole lot of r d that goes into making a blower style graphics card as good as it can be so for most users looking to build in a small form factor case i do still recommend an open air graphics card because again you are just getting a more premium cooling solution most of the time. If you can go for the biggest card that will fit in the particular case that you're going with, usually that is the best option. Just be mindful of the CPU cooler thermal increases relative to what you'll get with a blower card. And lastly, if you are looking to pick up a new compact case or maybe a new graphics card, either blower or open air, I will leave some recommendations down below. As always, guys, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.